be like, hello, welcome. Nature infused ash here, foraging with Bigfoot. Uh, just hopping on, I'll let people show up. Let me know where you guys are from. Any topics you guys want to talk about? I'm not 100% sure. Just putting some pine essential oil on. Connecting with nature that way. Hello, hello. So, today is Thursday, March 21st. <clears throat> and again, drop a comment. Let me know where you guys are tuning in from. Uh, Feel free to ask any questions. I wasn't sure what I was going to touch base on. Maybe more so along coherence and the one expedition where the Sasquatch threw a couple stones at the trailer and woke us up. And then we went into the bush to find them. Not really find them. Just kind of follow. Um... Good evening, Camping with Sasquatch. Nice to see you here, currently in the Southeast US. Yeah, I see that you're traveling um, at different locations. It's really nice to, you've come, your your content is great. Um, I really do like it. And the, the amount of research that you're doing is fantastic. Like, it's amazing. Hello, Sarah. Kirsty, nice to see you. All the way from Scotland, so welcome. Um, but yeah, anyways, back to, I'm not sure why I wanted to touch base on that expedition. I think something came up. Maybe I was watching that live show last night. Um, I can't remember. Also, I'm being called to go to the co coast, so like the west coast, Vancouver. And what is it? Squamish. The Squamish. Uh, Sasquatch are calling me because everything that I've been um, buying has like Squamish water. This is very interesting. Uh, camping with Sasquatch, you're welcome. I did some travels and decided I need to make more stops. This trip, I brought a tent. Nice. Yeah, I was thinking about how am I going to, you know, go tenting. I don't know if I could go tenting in the wilderness where I have live interactions. I think maybe with some other people but on my own because i'm like well if i go out on my own <laughs> where the heck am i going to um sleep other than like i, I enjoy sleeping in the back of my suv because it's that just that security because i thought you know if i sleep in a tent and there's something outside i think i would have a you know a meltdown i know i did alone with bigfoot at the beginning of last year in july i think it was the beginning of july into june somewhere in there so i was like okay he's actually ready to do round two of uh <laughs> alone with bigfoot i don't know we'll see um it's got to work up and really keep that center so maybe i'll start thinking about that the west coast is very beautiful um it's definitely calling me the ocean just to get that that energy um, hey Rob, Mani Manitoba, nice. Uh, water is cold. <laughs> yeah. Um, but water is cold. I have an ice bath for like a month and a half. Uh, you know, the research is so all over the place with that. So you really want to tune in and listen to your body with ice bathing. And I, I was told that that I saw a podcast where they're talking about how, how ice bathing actually will de-age you. And it's like, well, that's not the purpose of, you know, doing that. So occasionally, maybe every week, and I prefer going into natural water. And I'm not going to go into the river when there's ice on it. It's just, I can't wrap my hand around it. It's not for Ashley. <laughs> um, but yeah, so thinking about doing that but I wanted to talk about cloaking and coherence and really becoming one with the energy right really being coherence with what in the environment we're around so we can evolve to the ability to 
cloak maybe one day, right? Hello, Alex. They're in Colorado. We have a lot of Bigfoot. I have a few spots. Nice. Um, I know a couple people down in, I guess, more Boulder area. And I haven't heard anything from them. <laughs> they know what I do, but I don't know if they really are believers. Yet, they're, you know, woo and understand that energy and stuff is all real. So, it's interesting when people are completely open to Bigfoot. Maybe because they haven't had an experience and don't know what to look for. So I try to connect people and I mean, I've always had a connection, but until I was taught and guided on what to look for in the forest, I would have had no clue, right? And now it's like, okay, <laughs> and now I know. And they've definitely been around my whole life, but I didn't know because I had to have someone guide me with the tree breaks, learning the energy of, of Sabe and stuff, right? So it's nice that you're putting in the time and know that you're interacting with them. Camping with Sasquatch, it amazes me how many people can live right in, yeah, really active area and have no idea they are there. Yeah. Um, again, it's because they're so turned, they're, they're missing the subtleties and they're not looking for you know what's out of place and maybe they don't know what n true nature really is to what can actually create something that's more of a um hmm, you know done by being that <laughs> has that uh, intention to break trees and again i think that's frequency so and maybe they don't they don't see it because they're not at that coherence that frequency right i think you need to be a certain frequency of a person to have an interaction because I've went out and I've interacted with Sasquatch and people are not seeing what I'm seeing. So again, is, is it because they have a different set of sunglasses on? They're not at that frequency because some people have lost their whole reality. Like Sasquatch isn't real, but yet there's stuff happening, happening right in front of them. And if they don't understand the, the ability of cloaking and what to look for, I mean, there's, it's all over the place, right? Hello, Chuck Jacobs from Arizona. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting for sure. I mean, I'm still working on the ability to decipher when I'm out in the woods, when a uh, Sasquatch is actually cloaking. So I think too many people rush around in life and sadly miss so much. Right. And they're not present. And when you, when you live in the past, you develop guilt when you live in the future you have anxiety so where's the best place being in the present moment being in all your five senses right so it's really your breath can guide you there and then you know engaging in all your five senses anyways i was going to say something oh we were talking about the cloaking and i was doing a little research on that just to understand but i mean there's i never knew there was research and stuff where there's actually technology pending and, you know, and it depends if it gets brushed under the carpet, right? Cause stuff like this usually tends to just disappear. But people are developing, you know, stuff that can actually cloak stuff. So that was interesting. And again, with the device that I'm working with, uh, it's been a game changer. When you can actually get rid of those blocks, those subconscious blocks, and actually anchor in the frequency that you want... Because what happens is, as we go and see Sasquatch, they don't, I believe, again, I have no idea because we're all learning, that they're so adapted to nature that they know how to use these abilities. We've been programmed and, you know, we're different as well because we we have like more of those, maybe not men either, right? Women are going to be have more emotions, maybe more feelings, differently than a, a, a masculine energy right so when you're evolving and and your body is going up in frequency we have to get rid of those dense energies so like let's say i was i was holding defensiveness in my liver so my for me to upgrade my frequency let's say where i'm sitting at like an 11 and i want to upgrade to that 12 so i had to release the the defensiveness in my liver to be able to upgrade the liver to move to a frequency that I can hold. Because a lot of people, they can get up to a frequency, 
but then the subconscious mind goes nope that's too high and it slams you back down so that's where we have to do the work to rid those core beliefs those subconscious programs so we can actually maintain that level um also what was i going to say i was talking about something yesterday and hmm I wanted to bring it up and I totally just forgot because I got distracted. Uh, shoot. Hmm. I don't know. Let me know if you guys have seen Sasquatch Cloak, what your thoughts are on the cloaking process. Or do you guys know what I mean when I'm talking about changing your frequency so you can, you know, up level? Oh, that, that's what we were talking about yesterday was the neurons. So I had an experience and I got like I was so blissed out felt so good on all levels it was like mind-blowing like this can actually happen and I was so high so not like not drug high like high and bliss in those feelings of excitement and joy right so I was up there and all of a sudden when you can get that high your neurons in your brain have nowhere to go because they don't have those other ones to connect to because they are missed so they start to misfire and what can happen as we are humans it will, you know, it can f fill it full of negativity and then send you crashing down. So now having awareness of the event that brought those feelings of like bliss and like, oh my gosh, this can actually happen. Like what? And really knowing that I might come down in frequency and know since I'm now aware of it to know that I'm going to have to process that and really integrate what just happened and not go negatively. Because what can happen for myself is I'll be like, oh, um, it's kind of like cognitive dissonance, but I, it's hard for me to accept and I can become guarded maybe is a, is a word or maybe defensive and stuff. And again, see, I, I was releasing defensiveness in my, in my liver, but that, I, you know, <clears throat> that was, uh, an experience. So. Even so again, when, when I see a Sasquatch, yeah, I see it, but I still have that time I have to integrate. It's like, it's cognitive dissonance. I really saw something, but then it's like you second guess and it's like, mm, no, I didn't. It was, I'm just making it up and I didn't really see that. So again, maybe that's what's happening to a lot of people camping with Sasquatch and Kirsty when we go out is people they go oh my gosh look at that but they have cognitive dissonance and then all of a sudden go oh no that's just something you know I heard or just a shadow I saw or something you know that you perceive because it's really hard um especially with when Sasquatch can have the ability to <clears throat> come in, in and out of our quantum reality we're just gonna call, call into our reality so they're using the quantum I swear when me and a friend were in 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 here uh, I swear it's like Sasquatch threw a rock and something hit the I have um I don't know what we call it, like a chakra hanging thing and someone it a rock came in and it like it's like they came in dropped it hit the counter and then rolled down and I'm like what this wasn't here and where did that come from because I know that's the rock I grabbed as a gift when Sasquatch left it for me so they literally brought it so I pile them up and it's interesting to watch what happens still haven't had anything happen with the glyph <laughs> probably because um, just having a hard time uh, accepting I guess and not having doubt hello Sasquatch confessions welcome I was gonna ask you if you want to jump on live today but I just I didn't Chuck Ash are you communicating with them I do uh, communicate with them more so if I'm I have to be intentional more so especially now that I'm not in nature it's really hard to hear what's coming in so if I'm not completely present and and being outside and really connecting it's really hard for me to hear the messages come in or I guess maybe trust and I think a lot of what they're teaching me right now is to <laughs> trust no believe right and that's hard it's happening 
crap don't. Oh, lots of everything. Life is happening. But, um, yeah, so, no, until I, it takes practice. Absolutely, it takes practice. <laughs> Life takes practice. It's like a journey of learning, right? Um, but yeah, so what I've been really do, trusting ourselves is key. Absolutely. And what I've been really doing is really going in and meditating. And I'm not one, because I like to meditate and walk in, in nature. Like I'll get, you know, and that is a form of meditating. You don't always have to sit in like a guru meditation pose, right? But I've really been actually going in for at least five minutes and just allowing myself to be present in the body and listen to what comes in. Um, again, now the ones that seem to be communicating to me aren't in this area. They're again on the West coast and I'm going, <laughs> okay. Um, I was planning on maybe going out next week to the West coast, but I was like, I don't know. Uh, I'd like to go with certain people so I can have, uh, guidance because I mean I've been there I've been sturgeon fishing on the Fraser and stuff and really on the Harrison hot springs area but again I don't really know those Sasquatch I've heard a whole bunch of different stories from um, different people so I don't know but they're the ones that are calling me right now but to more physically and now when I say calling like I can hear them but it's like that I need to make physical contact with the land and another place is the Yukon. Um, the Yukon is definitely something that's calling me. Now is it the land? I don't know, I've learned over time in the past two and a half years that maybe it's not the land. Like I, I'm aware of the land and I can really f feel high energetic points, but maybe it's also Sabe going, yep, come connect, receive this energetic, this nature, this, this, um, this part of the grid because like there's ley lines in in the earth and stuff right so there's an energetic hot hot spot there so I think that's where I, I you know I, I tend to be drawn to whether there's Sasquatch there I don't know but again it's hard it's all a learning game for me and everyone else right so camping with Sasquatch I definitely find physical being in nature physically being in nature causes sort of shift in my mind absolutely hard to explain but you guys probably get it right absolutely and i think it's because again we're connecting to all the elements we're not being bombarded by emfs and and radiations and stuff like that even though they are everywhere it's not as bad because nature is helping take that static out of our bodies that can build up when we're present in cities and communities and stuff right so that's definitely uh something I've noticed but even you know like my vision will get better because like I even notice like when I'm sitting there on the phone it's like okay you're always looking at that small writing and it's like your eyes go blurry but anyways let's um you guys have any questions I don't know what else Uh, going to the radium area, so the radium research area, in hopefully April. We are getting a bunch of snow. It's not supposed to be <coughs> snowing out there, so hopefully the roads will be dry, because I know the mine road that we have to go in on is pretty sloppy when, when the frost is coming out of the ground, right? But, um... <coughs> What else? Oh, I was going to talk about that, um, that flag tree that I have, that I found in the, in the foothills. So in my last video that I've done, uh, I was talking about it with someone yesterday and they said, usually what happens is, cause I said, well, they asked, well, how fresh was the break? And I said, well, it's pretty fresh. And it was like, do you think it was made after they did the ceremony and the prayer flags on the tree or, or before? And I thought, wow it might have been done after so I know they do honor I was told why they would have been honoring the tree or in that area like the guardians and stuff so it's very quite interesting as I learn because so many people have different 
Well, I don't know. It was like they were all the colors of the chakra. Then they had, um, and you'll see, you can see it in my video, but then at the top of where all those, those flags or I don't know, ribbons, no, they were like, they were scarce type of fabric. And then at the top, there was a, a, a hawk feather like tied up, but it was kind of hanging as well. And then at the bottom there was cans of salmon and, um, I was told by someone that has seen Aboriginals do this. There was other things, but there was like empty containers and I thought, well, okay. But yeah, there it's in to do with, with wasabi as well. A medicine tree. Oh, okay. I don't know. And what would they use a medicine, <coughs> sorry, medicine tree for, <laughs> I'm sorry to sound like someone. Uh, if you make it out here, I can show you some areas for sure. Yeah. Okay. That'd be great because. Um, I guess I could put your number on my phone because it's easier. I almost got logged out of Instagram today and I'm like, I don't even know my password. So finding this, feeding the spirits. Oh, right. That's, I remember. So they get hungry. Okay. But anyway, so that, that tree was, it did have a tree break. Like it was a clear break and the top of it was, so it was an overbreak. So it was completely gone. And then there was a tree next to it that had like a weaving of a stick through it possible another tree break but I, I ruled it out because we do have like a mind of like you know logical mind that goes oh that's just the that's just the wind that blew that one over just because of the type of tree it was and what you know so uh and in in, in that area where they were that with the prayer flags on that tree there's a lot of sabe so that's the sasquatch i had an interaction with where they clacked the two rocks together and then shoved over the tree <laughs> and it's funny because they distracted someone with a squirrel and i've seen them They'll distract people with squirrels or like birds or however to make sure that because maybe because they're not ready right they're really not ready to see what's actually going to happen but that person goes running after the squirrel. It was odd behavior. Why would they go chasing after the squirrel? I wouldn't know. And then I looked up and that's where the tree break was. And I've had multiple people tell me that um, in this area that uh, even a, one was a ranger. Or he worked in the oil gas. So he had keys and stuff that he was able, able to um, go into locations where the average person can't. Because it, they like to keep us out of these areas. And he would go back and he would hear the people's stories and see, you know, things that aren't natural, you know, trackways and stuff. So they're definitely prevalent in this area. I'd say 30 minutes west of, of myself. And then as the crow flies, the research area over in the Kootenai and the radium area is <laughs> like, if I was, if I was a crow, I could just go right on over there. And it's like, it's right there. So that whole valley is like energetically connected. So again, I've grown up in this area. Maybe that's why the Sasquatch know who I am because I've, I've been interacting all these years without even knowing it. And um, so it'll be curious to see what happens this year. Uh, hello, Eric. Sasquatch confessions, they are happening around us right now. Yes, 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 yes. absolutely. And, you know, I have a lot of people like they reach out and they go, oh, you're ready. You're ready to see a Sasquatch and you're ready to receive your gift. And I'm going... <laughs> okay I'm, I'm so happy you believe in me I'll believe in myself too it's like and it's different because these people aren't they're not connected and when when people can say and so at the beginning of October last year in 2023 when Todd and I were under that structure and Sasquatch were right behind us and I had like oh my gosh like like this is really happening i don't understand like who are you and that's where it really really changed my perspective on todd and how he can actually have this contact with them like it really blows my mind and sometimes you know maybe i don't know how to comprehend it because it's you know it's very um yaoi um very hard to but anyway when when he was explaining that whole situation and how you know I'm supposed to 
really grab the energy when I'm supposed to grab this gift. And then someone else that totally had no idea that this happened said, yeah, you just need to grab the gift out of their hand. And I'm like, what? Yeah, I guess supposedly <laughs> what these people are telling me, unless they're all in cahoots. I can't see it, but they're like, yeah, you, you have to grab the auction, the, um, the gift, but make sure you have like contact with it. And that's what they keep going. Like you need to build up. So when this happens and they give you that, that you're able to be calm, right? Not allow that mind to jump and go, oh my gosh, into fear. So when we were in, again, back to October and there was two of them standing, well, there was three all together, but the two of them were standing. They wanted me to come and um, present themselves and I could feel them. And all I heard before that event, I heard, we're going to be behind you, but we're going to be on our, on your right. And, and that was happening. And I'm like, Oh my goodness. And he's like, they're right behind you. And I'm like, I know I can feel it. And, and I can hear, like I could, I could see, but like, even though I wasn't looking at them, I could see what was happening behind me. And they were using Todd as a channel and he's like, Oh, so are you ready to turn around? And I knew I just wanted confirmation. And I mean, this is where I guess I need to just have confirmation for myself is he wanted to have me turn around myself, but I, I needed to know that they were standing there and that I could slowly turn around. I felt I would have been more comfortable with that, but they asked him, Oh, they said that she might not be ready. And they, he, he said, okay, do something to see if she is and see how she reacts. Well, all of a sudden this again, grouse out of nowhere flies up the tree right beside us. And I'm like, what? And I jumped and I mean, I didn't jump like, like scream or anything, but it, it was just this bird all of a sudden appeared and went up the tree and they're like, Oh, she's not ready. And then they kind of backed off. So again, I know they use, especially the, gr the grouses, um, as a conduit because that's where on one of the expeditions I had, well, I took a lady and then some other random people that I knew showed up there and we were out and that's where they used the grouse and I could see the Sasquatch cloaking on the tree and the clack clack that the bird made. But, you know, I could see and I was like, oh my gosh, that was Sasquatch. But yet the people that weren't ready for it saw the bird, thought it was just the bird, and it all cra you know, came crumbling down. So I've seen a lot of gross action happen. Um, going back and con they are happening around us, yes. Okay. Hello, River Morris. It's amazing that you find when you look and, and are ready. Yeah. Yep. Um, and I guess, and you can, you can sit here and say, oh, I'm ready to see them. I'm ready to see them. Yeah, you don't know how your ego mind, that mind, that, that mind that's going to keep you safe because it's programmed to keep you safe, is going to react in that situation. Again, I've asked them, you know, if you were, as I'm driving in, can you just present yourself, run across the road, present yourself in a way where I feel safe, and then maybe I can work to, you know, see you in the wilderness or have contact. Actually, when I was at the campfire with Leslie and they were running around and she was, so the fire was in front of us. She was right here and I was still standing over here. Um, I heard, I saw this big black shadowy fig figure and I was like, oh, he's like, oh, so you see me? And I'm like, oh yeah. And I went cold, like ever, my body was cold and I'm like, yeah. And, and Leslie knew I was looking at something and I was like. He's like, so, and he steps out and then I like saw how big the body was and he's like, so you ready for me to approach? And I'm like, and my legs and my, oh, it was cold. And I'm like, mm -mm. And so this is, I'm having a conversation telepathically through mind speak. Right. And I'm like, mm, I'm not ready. No, <laughs> no, because I didn't know, you know, like, I don't, I feel like, oh, I have to be the man. I have to protect this woman that's sitting here. What if, you know, there's those scenarios and I didn't feel like, you know, I was ready to have that. I would need someone that I know is going to truly have my back when presented with like an encounter that close. Like he was so close. I would say maybe five feet away when he came out 
and again it's like at that dusk where it's so hard to see but yet you can see the big shadow of it was black like it went and then all of a sudden it disappeared and it's like he went back into the tree and then backed off and then you know he was running up and down the tr you know not the trail but it would have been behind the trail through the bush <laughs> I say he's squealing like a deer, but unless he's like, no, he's roaring. And I'm like, hmm. So it's, it's interesting as well to, when you hear these guys, what are your ears actually hearing and why I always perceive it as a squealing deer? Because I go, well, the only animals that's going to make sounds like that is, so that's my logical mind. It's a deer. And you know how they can, I know they like make that sound with their nose or whatever. And when that scenario ended and I calmed down and we were both like, whew, okay, <laughs> and we listened to the recording, it's hilarious. When you're actually in a state that you're not actually cognitive because you are in this kind of a fight or flight type of uh, <laughs> aspect, right? So it's like, oh my gosh, that's not a squealing deer. Why did I think that was a squealing deer? Deer don't move that fast. They don't go charging through the bush making this weird squealing and i don't again i call it a squealing squealing deer maybe it's a squealing owl but highly unlikely because the last time that happened was when i was with kyle and it was like the squealing deer was coming right at us but there's no owls i've never seen a squeak screeching owl out there the amount of noise that is being made when it's going on you know, owls don't make noise like that and they don't thud on the ground, right? So, I'm making a them. They can be not ready as well as Sasquatch. Yeah, Sasquatch, I feel like they'll present themselves when people feel ready and it's going to be a lot to do with people and their, yeah, their energy, their frequency. Fear is most common reaction, absolutely. And again, sometimes you can say, oh, I can control it. Well, I don't know. There's hunters that go out into the bush with rifles and all of a sudden come out shitting their pants because they're so terrified and these are you know people that go hunting for predators so it does happen they have always been good to me though yes and that's why i'm thankful i'm thankful they've always been good to to me as well and i think that shows really um our heart energy right are we connected to our heart are we loving? Are we caring? Are we respectful? Because they can all sense that, right? I'm sure if I were to present, and maybe, you know, when he was getting all, when she claimed he was roaring, and I said, no, he's squealing like a deer, he was upset, but not in a violent way. It was more like, geez, Ashley, <laughs> you ask for it, you ask for it. And it's like he was just, you know, gorillas, they do it. And I'm not comparing them to gorillas. <laughs> so, yeah Chuck do you ask them their names I I don't maybe I will start doing that not maybe I will start doing that that's a good idea I'm just gonna note that in my book sometimes I don't know what types of questions to ask because it's it is um, different it's getting it's really like when you want to change your neural pathways in your brain it's that consistent work right so it's like mm consistency on asking questions and again as a child you know school didn't allow you to question because I've always questioned everything everything and people would get so irritated like why are you questioning it's like I guess I'm a black sheep I don't know because it doesn't make sense what you're telling me is not making sense right so I will write that down um sorry for making the camera shake I will always stand with the Sasquatch <clears throat> yeah me too uh, they're just so um, highly evolved and connected to nature and appreciate nature and, and have so much knowledge that way. And I think it's just absolute <laughs> um, brilliance. Like, it's just, yes, um, it's just amazing. And, you know, I always in the past year stuff I thought you know I'm cool if they want to kidnap me and and uh, teach me the ways as long as you know <laughs> that's all as long as you're gonna teach me and stuff like that but it, it does I mean that's it's scary as you know 
I'd love to know how to survive and adapt and just the know the ability that they they have evolved to or have evolved, you know help us I don't know whatever I'm just gonna skip that Eric it is a mental challenge yeah most can't accept it some refuse some will deny unless confronted absolutely and sometimes you know I have denied what I've seen and I've been you know Todd has per been perceived as oh she, he's giving shit to Ashley no it's because he knows that Ashley knew this thing, but now she's letting her ego, that mind, come in and take place. And the way he helps you question what actually happened really helps get past those blocks, those subconscious blo blocks. And again, it's that, <clears throat> those, those little uh, subconscious stuff, right? Sasquatch confession. Sasquatch sharing their name is sacred. I used to share her name, but I don't anymore out of respect. Right, and I guess, you know, you can always ask if you can, and I always ask when I try to communicate, or not try, but when I communicate with certain um, questions, I'll ask if I'm allowed to even ask them questions, right? So I'll be like, Sabe, um, can I ask a question? And they'll give me a yes or no answer, which is then, I guess, you're, you're, you're building that muscle, you're building the telepathic muscle, you're building the asking the questions, that knowing, that true inner knowing, right? China Productions, he was excited to meet you and you were excited to meet him. So sweet. So much gratitude. Mm -hmm. Well, and again, Kim, we were talking about, uh, at the beginning, I mentioned the October when the, we saw them. Well, I mean, I saw what I saw with the green eyes glowing, but I knew there was a lot of presence there when you and I stood back and Todd and Kim, or Todd and... Katie went forward and you and I were standing there. I mean, I felt the presence and again, they were definitely on our right. If you remember the right. So they were like, those are the ones that wanted to interact with me. It's like they were distracting the other two. And then <clears throat> the ones that wanted to interact with myself were on my right. And I could hear them. They were like, you know, we're here. And I'm like, yeah, I know I can hear you, feel you. I mean, physically I can't see them. I can see, um, I guess it's like remote view, I guess, right? Jake. Okay, Jake, yes. <laughs> Jake the Sasquatch? I don't know. Uh, Arizona at Sasquatch Confessions. What state are you in? He is in Mission BC. Yes. Chuck. Ashley, I have had contact and gotten names in six western states. Oh, that's amazing. Um... So now when you say contact, are you like contacting through mind speak and telepathy and stuff like that? Or are you like physically going out and having contact? Um, have you visited like the areas where they contact or are they just contacting like they do with me, like the ones out in BC, like here we are, come connect that way. I guess maybe I could ask them just for my own. I have been, someone has told me, oh, this is a Sasquatch this is what your name would be, and I don't remember. Uh, I do have it written down or screenshotted. Um, Ashley, by allowing her to be ready for the encounter. Yes, definitely. It seems Ash has the capacity questioning everything and open-hearted. Yeah, yes, much gratitude and experience. Yeah, mind speak, seeing cloaked individuals. Yeah, see, that's awesome. Um, and I think, you know, they, they cloak more than, you know, we think. And again, really developing that I. Ask them about me. <laughs> okay, so that's question questions. I'll ask them about you. Um, when I, you know, it's developing that I. So again, when we're developing our telepathic muscle that mind speak muscle it's it's adapting our eyes to the cloaking and again go see you know uh alone with bigfoot back in july or june in my videos it's not that far back because i haven't put that many out there see if you can see so it's going to be i think within the first well maybe i'll put a video together where people have shown me um like they'll literally outline where they say sasquatch is cloaking and then you've also had the people that say 
all those other weird things. I don't even dog man and stuff. It's like, yep, okay, <laughs> I'm going to go down that rabbit hole. But thanks for sharing. And I know they were cloaking when Aria and I went up to the tree to see if the apples were taken. Because she's like, I'm not going up there. I'm like, yep, you have to go up there. You're my protector. <laughs> like I have nothing and I don't you know I'm not gonna I'm just I have this gun for like any kind of predator but you know I'm not gonna I don't want to use it and she she felt intuitively like I know I'm your rock Ashley and I'm like get up the hill so she got up the hill and you know there was one cloaking and she knew it she knew it she could feel it but she was such a good dog because usually she's like nope I don't want to and she'll stay far back but her and I had a really nice bond. I think we were just work, you know, she was reading my, my energy as well. So it was really cool to watch that and, and know that there was Sasquatch there. But I, unless you have that eye that you've adapted to seeing that cloaked energy, it's, it's challenging. Uh, Sasquatch show presence in so many ways. Absolutely. They do. Chino Productions, I feel they very much have a love and appreciation for Ash, even accepting her into the family clan. Yeah. But just respect, right? Gratitude and appreciation. And just even going out there with the experience. Uh, in the past month, I've, pro I've been thinking a lot, like, you know, I wasn't much for going out into nature with groups of people. But I think one of the f things that I enjoy the most right right now was, you know, that I was sitting with was watching other people come out and boom, hey Maynard, I'm wondering where you are, I haven't seen you for a while. But really <clears throat> interacting and watching people grow because, you know, they come from cities and they ha don't have any idea how to connect and you watch them release that density of reality. I thought man that is so so amazing to me to watch these people engage just with nature and that's what Sasquatch wants can you become one with nature and uh, a lot of people are so disconnected and they do and I think humanity is becoming aware that we need to really connect you know because I, I work I run the grounding company in in Canada and I am so happy, it makes my heart so happy to know so many people are benefiting from grounding and earthing. I'm just like, <laughs> this is amazing, it makes my heart so happy. And I love contributing to people heal. Like, it brings me so much happiness and joy. So again, when people are out in the bush connecting, it's like that brings me joy. Because they're, they're, they're really actually healing. And... I love it. I don't go out with guns, only these. <laughs> yeah, I don't go out with guns either. I do my, I, I carry bear spray because some, you know, I've been saying, it's like you have to have that armor, that protection. And again, it's going to be that energy. What I don't want to run into a grizzly bear or, or a black bear. I can stand my ground, but what if that bear wants to actually... <laughs> not be friendly right and again you can tell tell when when animals are prevalent what their stance are are they you know in the area um when i went out in november and the rangers pulled us out first time ever and it was me and roxanne and we were we pulled over i'm like really i'm not hunting <laughs> she, she's like what are you guys doing out here I'm like oh we're just camping she's like did you see anything suspicious we're like, well, what do you mean suspicious? <laughs> I'm like, no, not at all. Do you want me to? Like, we're not looking for Bigfoot. I don't know what you're talking about. Because she's probably like, why are these women out here in the middle of nowhere? It, there's snow on the ground. <laughs> like, it was weird. Really weird. Um, she's like, no, I think that, that ranger was a robot. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. Yeah, that was definitely a weird experience. I don't know where I was going to go with that. Oh, the guns so I didn't have anything again I'll, I'll bring that protection with the energy oh she said there's a lot of bears there's a grizzly bear that hasn't went to bed and I'm like well um, I know what to look for there was no fresh tracks no scat no fresh scat so there was no bear in our areas she's like well you gotta be very careful because there's bears and I'm like nope 
I know what to look for, but thanks for, for your suggestion. Now, I'm going to go not hunting or anything, so, but she definitely thought it was weird. Um, if they have accepted Ashley into their family, they have also given her a name. Yeah, um, I have been told what that name is, and, I, and it's something to do with heart, and I don't remember. It, I, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. It's like... Maybe I'll make sure I have it on my next live and I can share that. Uh, Eric, closing off the mind to the outer interference and cleaning the penile gland, opening the third eye. Absolutely, but remember, we need to do the thymus, right? So the thymus, the penile, the pituary, and up. Um, that thymus connection. So again, that's another hormonal gland, just like these are, when we want to look at the scientific aspect of it. So it's really keeping those cleanses that... Um, enter, you know, like it's even like the energetics of it and really keeping your vessel, this vessel right here, cleansed and clean, you guys. Hydrated, right? You've been around, right on, Mainer. Good to know. Sasquatch's family, Sasquatch Confessions, they have seen me in every lifetime, never lost sight of my soul or energy. Yeah, I, I think you know the ones they're really connected with and maybe you were just a sasquatch at one time that's what i always used to tell todd i'm like no nah, you're just a sasquatch in a different lifetime <laughs> or you're half sasquatch and i'm not being rude i i've even told him that and i go you know it's because how how can you have such a, a connection you know so been sitting back and reading the dubs message on todd's live sitting in the background watching things play out uh, yeah, I was sitting in the background last night. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I was really having a laugh at the comments. Um, it's very... I know. It was It was funny. It was, it was really funny. Because there was a lot of things that were... I saw what was happening. It was just... It was funny. But total respect. Or what... Call, okay, so... Or what... Todd calls teeth knife spray. Well, exactly. That's what, that's the word I was looking for. Uh, China productions was your teeth, right? You carry it for your teeth. Well, I mean, I'll go, that's what I, I didn't have a gun when I went up to the tree. I, I carry an ax. It, it's going to be a, you know, if something wants to jump on me. I'll just, I'll just chop it. So that's what I'll do to, those are my teeth, an ax or a knife. I will put spray on, but I don't, I've never, I've been sprayed by bear spray, and that's not fun. <laughs> and, and sometimes I go, I can't see how an animal that wants to eat you is going to be detoured, unless it's right in front of your face and you get it into your, into his eyes. So yeah, Eric, a loud air horn can yeah, so bears and cougars to carry in the wild. That's a good idea. I did have. I'm gonna write that. I did have an air horn. Um, I don't know where that went. So time to invest in a new one. So thanks for that, Eric. Kirsty, lots of not very kind people on the messages last night, Maynard. Well, yeah, I mean, some are rude, but there were, you know, what, I'm stopping by to give flowers or, you know, it's just, it, it, it does kill it for people that are there for the purpose of growing themselves. So loud air horn, that's. Um, sounds like an, okay, where am I going? Okay, no grizz here. But you have black bears, don't you? Sasquatch confection? You have cougars too. And if anything, I am more, I don't like to use the word terrified, but I have never been comfortable with cougars. They will stalk you. I mean, they can be in a tree and just jump on you. Cat and mouse. You can't run because they're, that's what they want. They want you to be their little mouse. Use the kaleidoscope meditation. Use the kaleidoscope meditation. Okay. Um, I don't. Th I want. I don't know if I've heard of that. I want to say maybe, but I'm not sure. I will. Meditation. I was. I am a Sasquatch in uniform. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> exactly, and that's that's exactly it. Sasquatch <laughs> confessions. Uh, China Productions, have you been given a name or heard yourself being called by a new name? Yeah, Nature Infused. When I go, when I ask certain questions, like, no, you're Nature Infused. And I'm like, what? So, and I don't know if that's just the mind. So, I have not heard. 
but I have not really asked or been open to the idea of, of names. So again, I will move forward with that in my knowing. I carry love, respect in the forest and Sasquatch. Yeah. Basketball cinemas. Hey guys, I'm a moderator of this stream and it's not going into kids only mode. Please leave stream if you're over 18. <laughs> okay. Um, we'll just go like this and remove that. There we go. Todd managed the chat pretty well. Yes. Sorry, the meditation Joe Dispenza. Um, right. I've been doing, so again, um, doing a lot of, well, the device I have has been amazing and that's the same type of thing that Joe Dispenza uses. And I will definitely look into that kaleidoscope meditation. I have a dogman spirit guide, dogman confessions. Okay. I'm not sure about dogman. Um, I'm great. Thank you. Ravi, how are you? All predators stay clear of me and the Sasquatch gang. We are connected and protected by the elements they are masters of. Oh, I love that aspect. Um, very nice. That's my twin brother. <laughs> oh, Dogman Confessions. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was one. That's what I was wondering. I felt some kind of connection with um, the confessions part. Thought, oh, that's a interesting. Um, so then my question to Sasquatch Confessions is, what's your stance on dogmen? Um, and then again, people maybe play in that reality. Uh, myself, I have no idea. Not too sure about, I've had certain people inform me. I do think having an awareness can be beneficial. So if we do end up in a situation, we're not completely thrown off guard because I wouldn't want that um, but yeah anyways I don't know um, so I guess they are very real ash <clears throat> are they are they something to be scared of maybe you shouldn't tell me that um, I don't know. Hi, how are you? I'm good. Oh no, see, they're all coming in now, right? <laughs> Thanks a lot. Anyways, um, again, with that alone with Bigfoot video, I did see, um, people commenting that there was dog men in the background and stuff. So I don't know. I don't know. Well, I guess it's like a human, like a werewolf, is it? I don't know. Where you are looks beautiful. Yes. Canada. Oh, I was camping with Sasquatch. I have a feeling you're protected out there, Ash. Yeah, I mean, and I think I feel that as well. It's just sometimes that, um, uh, that ego, just, it can creep in, right? Dogmen, they're real pricks, are they? Have you ever been bluff charged? Uh, no, just that tree being pushed over was the only, only type of, well, maybe when Leslie and I, maybe that's what he was doing when I <laughs> irritated him by not allowing him to come forward and present himself because there was definitely charging like, and weird sounds. So that's, that's interesting. Um, the only counter with a grizzly was we were in the vehicle. Um, and one was stalking us, um, cause when we turned around, we went and went down to the river, but we, we hopped in. So we got back to the campsite, hopped in a vehicle, went down to the river and came back up. And the grizzly bear was literally following the scent of where we were walking and right out of the bush towards the camp. So nothing, thank goodness, being in like, uh, physical, like, walking in the bush. Uh, I only really see them in the vehicle coming into camp or out of camp or going to other areas to research, like driving. My only account with a dog man, wolf faced being gave a photo to me and from what knowledge I have gained. No different than Sasquatch, just look different. 
Okay. Interesting. Um, so then do they like present themselves as, you know, cause a lot of people say, Oh, you gotta, you have, you gotta watch out. You gotta be, you know, they're, they're dangerous. I mean, I guess Sasquatch can be dangerous too. Anything can be dangerous. Like, cause it's really just the energy you, you, you channel within yourself. Now, again, it's something to be aware of. Cause when I had that experience again with Leslie on the all girl expedition, it was, uh, very, like, I never knew we could actually quantum go into different realities. And now, you know, when it comes to that 411 stuff and all of a sudden people just vanish and disappear, well, I can see, I think the only reason that I came back was because I heard Sasquatch and there was two of them to my right. See, they're always to my right. I said, uh, you better get her out of here because she is going to like lose her and I was like and it's like they zapped me and all of a sudden it's like I fell through space time like a space time continuum and I landed on the ground and I was like holy cow and I look up and I'm like where am I and they dropped me where I could I could recognize where I was and I mean I knew I where I, I should have never have felt like I didn't know where I was and that was just mind blowing. And I'm like, oh my gosh. And then I'm like, where the heck am I? Why does this look like the gifting hill? And like, it was packed down. So I knew where I was. And I look at Leslie and I'm like, holy cow. And I fall back down to the ground and it felt like all my pieces had to come back. And I was just like, holy cow. So it was nice to have someone that kind of understands subliminal space and stuff like that because, oh my gosh. I'm so thankful Sasquatch is like, get her out of here. And, and you definitely help that. So there's some crazy stuff that can happen. And again, that's not even physical. How crazy does that sound to the average person? <laughs> crazy. Like it was hard for me to comprehend and even tell people and people go, Oh, okay. It's like, well, I'm glad that I had a person with me that has experienced subliminal space. And then, you know, when I watch these, 411s. I don't really watch them. I've had people been in an environment that they've had it on and I go, wow, that's might be what happens. No, I was sober. <laughs> I was complete. I don't, I don't do any, like I don't even drink alcohol. Um, so completely sober. I asked, I said, did you drug me? Cause I feel like I'm drugged. And I asked and she's like, I'm like, cause to me it felt like, oh my gosh, like all of a sudden I didn't know where I was. I felt like, holy cow, I've been drugged. Like it was, it was very weird, but there was no one other than her. And for the experience to happen in such like a short time, like no, but there, the, it's like I was in Alice in Wonderland. So like the mushrooms that we did see, and maybe I touched the poison mushroom, like they were just getting, like, I know my mushrooms. So to me, those weren't poisonous mushrooms, but they were getting bigger, bigger, and bigger. Now I've been told by people that have experienced this, when you start to feel like, um, things are like the ground is like quicksand, you really want to become physical. And I said, well, how do you become physical? Like make sure you touch a tree and stuff like that. And I've had, a, I've have had it happen a couple other times where I'm like, nope, touch something physical, right? So you can go into the frequency because what's happening is you're coming into coherence and you're, you're going into a different reality, subliminal space. And it is, it's crazy. Do you carry when going through grizzly territory? Um, other people, if I'm alone, I won't go. I will have like my bear spray, my ax, and don't really wander off too far if I'm alone in grizzly territory. But if there's other people, we all have weapons and usually someone has a, a gun. There are wolf people and dogmen, two different b beings. Oh, okay. Giant reset back to this dimension. Yeah. Sasquatch confessions. Wolf people are friendly. Dogmen can be territorial. Oh, okay. So makes sense. Was, and then no. So I wasn't, I was completely sober. Leslie, perfect. Having that grounded guide for the experience. Absolutely. Um, was, it was very nice. So only wolf men I saw was solid black, eight foot tall build a bit bulkier than our average Sasquatch scene. Hmm. Oversized wolf, three, four inches, slightly wave curly, sucking half of the hair. Interesting. So infrasound, 
can feel like that too much will knock you out and send to other dimensions. Hmm. Yeah, uh, I was looking into infrasound because I thought it doesn't make sense. Like infras infrasound, I, it just seems like it's like a term people have come up with, and it was like I don't get it. Um, because really, isn't aren't you just changing frequency? Um, again. I've been in a situation, so that maybe this was with infrasound, where you're you're terrified and you can't move. I don't know. The high time tours. Okay. <clears throat> I'm I'm great. Thank you. Hope you're great too. But um, I guess I need to do a little more research on the infrasound because it always. I had that experience with a mountain lion. Has anyone else experienced infrasound? And like, do you, any of you have um, a perspective? Because I know some perspectives I've seen on other chats, and I don't, I don't totally agree with because that's not what Sasquatch has shown me. It's it's really what they've shown me is adjusting, adjusting. Um, your frequency and again like Todd said it's you changed your frequency so like if I were to really go into this and adjust my frequency to whatever because everything is energy and we all know this whatever that is you know we could um, you could blend in with that just like the tree you're blending in with the tree I don't know Anyways, grounding can help you with understanding which allows you to be kinder and less annoying and not ask silly questions Yes, that's true. Grounding can help with that because now you're coming back into balance. I teach people that on the phone when they're out looking at grounding equipment. Yeah, um, big pit magic. I think the worst thing that's ever happened to me is being chased through the sticks by an angry badger. Yeah, those badgers, they can be, <laughs> can be deadly. They can be very angry and vicious little things, can't they? I actually had one in my yard and wanted the chickens and I took my car and my SUV and I chased it. It's like, get the heck out of here. And I'm like, so I wasn't going to run after it. What am I going to do? It's going to just turn around and run after me. No, thank you. Uh, Maynard, experience both frozen fear, yeah, panic, uncomfortable, and also zapped while push mowing. Uh, so like when you say also zap when, with, when push mowing, like when they zapped you, did you experience the fear or like the uncomfortable pant, like couldn't move? Like when I experienced the frozen fear, I heard them, like they grunted outside my, uh, sleeping, when I was sleeping in the back of my SUV and literally made a sound like a roaring bear. That's <laughs> what I'll call that. But it wasn't. And I was like, oh my goodness. Um, I'm like, that's terrifying, but I literally couldn't move. Like I had like this deep rooted fear and I couldn't move. And I'm like, Oh my God, don't move. I can't move. <laughs> I'm terrified. Holy cow. And I, it, that was an experience. I don't, I think that's my only experience when it comes to frozen and fear. I mean, Maybe that's what I was hit when she pierced my heart when we were walking across that. But she let out that vocal and it, you know, hit my heart. Like, it penetrated my heart. Like, I've never heard frequency. Like, I've never had sound literally penetrate my body. Like, when you listen to music, it doesn't penetrate my body. You know, like, not not the way that that, that howl, that whatever the sound that she made hit my heart. I was like, whoa, that's crazy. That is like something I haven't even experienced. The first time I ever experienced, only time I've ever, ever experienced that. From your face, it seems that you are a good woman with sense of humanity. Thank you. Just like being electrocuted by an outlet. Oh, kind of like, oh, okay. Right. Zapped. That does, that's, that's uncomfortable. That is extremely uncomfortable. Um, I've never been, I've never experienced that ease either. So infrasound is a frequency change. We know very little about how other frequencies affect us. I think we have the most research on infrasound since it was weaponized. Mm. Right. 
Okay. Thank you, Chena Productions. Maynard, deep-rooted fear rarely gives a sighting more of an intimidating effect used. Right, and I think that's... And maybe they weren't literally putting it at me, but I heard it because I was the only one that, you know, everyone else was in the chair, in the trailer. Because I like to have my own experience when I'm out with other people. When I sleep in my SUV, I find I'm in my own energy, in my own energy environment, in my own field. So I don't have those other uh, distortions that can happen when they come from people that maybe aren't as ready or stuff like that. So it's nice to go when people are kind of on the same frequency and in coherence because you seem to get a you know a different result and you know sometimes I want to interact with certain people all the new frequency research is focused on healing woohoo yes that's why I love my Healy device and it's mind-blowing this you know it's an investment it's definitely a cool business that I'm a part of and I'm loving it because it's stuff I believe in and when I, you know, when I have to be in business, when I create business, it has to be in such alignment to who, to who I am, how it helps humans and, and help change humanity. And that is just, you know, I, I, it's just amazing. Everything is energy and I love it. And, and then just watching it work on myself using this device and I've now added some other clients into it to watch them transform their their energy and allow those distortions those frequencies and up level themselves so they can step into who they truly are which is cool and it sucks because it runs off you know you need that type of Wi-Fi it's like darn because I want to get out into the bush and be able to you know put that energy aspect into a whole group of people when we're in in the wilderness but again we can do that with nature as well by consuming it like actually like going and foraging some be berries or some tea drinking eating the berries um grounding going in the water you know hugging a tree however doing wild wildlife photo photos yeah running into a bear who was who grubbing yeah that's dangerous was the most frightening experience. You don't want to st startle a bear. No, right? Because uh, I remember doing, so I lived up, up in northern Alberta and had an acreage. Like, it was completely on crown land. It was amazing. And I was attending to my sunflowers because they're one of my favorite flowers. And looking up, and I would say maybe 100 yards away. Again, I'm not a... I'm not a Anyways, I looked up and there was a black bear. It looked at me and I looked at it and I'm like, oh shoot. <laughs> oh no. I startled him and he startled me. And I said, okay, I'm not going to run. And I kind of started slowly walking towards the house. And, he, and then he booked it down the hill. And I'm like, okay, thank goodness because that is scary. I don't, want, I don't like having interactions. Especially when, you know, you walk upon them. Like that is definitely not a good situation to be in makes no difference if you are with multiple people others can either be neutralized by distraction or put to sleep by the watchers well exactly and that's where uh my dad he was he was <laughs> they distracted him boom infrasound distracted other people can have the experience and i was just like <laughs> that's hilarious i like it's funny physics confirms it everything is vibrational energy Yes, absolutely. Still here listening. Awesome, Sasquatch. Confessions. Thank you for being here. Big Pimp Magic. Aren't black bears generally skittish compared to grizzlies? Oh, it's really going to be... They can be, but they can also stand their ground. And especially if you walk upon them, you know, eating or something. Grizzly bears are more territorial, for sure. Uh, they will, you know, stand their ground more so than... A black bear but a black bear can be angry at the same time I saw a really unpleasant black bear on the way into it was more on the gravel road that you take in and he was not he he was angry I wouldn't want to run into him he obviously was just kicked aside by mom a couple years old and he was angry he didn't know what to do he's totally lost you could just see his whole energy within him and around him that he was angry miserable 
didn't want to be in the situation that he was in. It's like, that bear would probably not be a friendly one to run into. So. <clears throat> um, don't have my quantum. It's over there. Next time I'll bring it. But I've wanted to, once I buy the coil, because I mean, these are, I wanted to be able to come into coherence as a group, right? And lift that vibration up. And that's why I love doing my lives and adjusting that. Hello, Tim from Ohio. Ohio. Uh, welcome. But, uh, yeah, see, and connecting with nature. Like, I love pine. Like, I'll, when I'm not in nature, I'll, I'll use my oils and I'll, and I'll drink the tea, the pine tea. And again, if you look at a pine cone, and if the pine cone is open, it looks no different than the third eye, like the penal, right? It's it's open, and when the ones are closed, that means your penal is closed. So it's pretty cool. Anyways, um, 7:40 my time, so I guess I will call it a night. Make sure you don't smell of peanuts. Don't wear flowery perfume. They are aroma sensitive. I don't know. The time I like used tons of, um, I was using on guard, which is going to be like cinnamon and clove and stuff. And mm, that was probably one of the best experiences ever when they came and, you know, interacted. So I think it really just depends. I don't wear perfume. It's definitely not natural. Um, peanuts. I don't eat peanuts. So <laughs> we're safe there. But uh, natural fragrance, I don't even like, so anything that says fragrance is man-made and it's not. So like when it's distilled or like the pine hydrosol, like these are hydrosols, you're gonna use like actual distilling processes and then you can drink it, right? So just like when I make tea with the pine, it's drinking it, it's I like, I'll apply, like I'll take the tree after I ask and, and if I'm allowed, just like when it comes to the, tree resin I'm allowed it'll glow I'll take that and I'll I'll, I'll rub it and get the you know the, the, the natural essence the smell the aroma of that because I'm becoming one with nature that's what they want they want us to adapt and become one with nature and what better way to become one with nature is when we're actually using it when we're guided and when we're aware because it speaks to you so again the the resin will light up and be like oh here i am just for you and i'm like oh tree medicine so it's like a tree candy right it's amazing you put it in your mouth you can suck on it i really like the fresh stuff i'm collecting the wisdom because they go oh i want you to have the wisdom of this tree which is not just the wisdom of the tree it's the wisdom of you know the mycelium underground it's all rooted don't forget to <laughs> ask for what other resins are up for there <clears throat> forget to ask what other resonance are up there right I mean that's it's a lot of like the pine resin spruce there's um, the balsam fir I like the Douglas fir again those are nice to just be able to connect with and it's good for your your teeth even though it likes to stick in your teeth and stuff right so anyways thank you all so much for being here um, definitely appreciate you all and ask questions, engaging, um, until next time, which is next Thursday. Um, yeah, if you guys have any ideas of what we can want to talk about, want to hop on, on the live, by all means, let me know. We can do that. We can all have a conversation. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Hope you all enjoy the rest of your evening. You're welcome, Kirsty. You all have a good night and take care.